Okay, everybody, I just wanted to show you all this because <clears throat> I ran into this at work today where my buddy Joe, hey Joe, if you're watching, <laughs> he wanted some help in creating a, um, <clears throat> let me save that and reload everything, some help in creating a um, chart in PowerShell uh, using one of the functions he was using. So, anyways, so I found this uh, URL here at uh, learn-powershell.net 2016-09-18 building-a-chart-using PowerShell and chart controls. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so following this little tutorial is really cool and I intend to go through it um, at work uh, at work with some of the data that I work with and add this to my own little uh, workflow and make it th make the data look more visual and um, easy to understand as far as what it what the data means so the first thing that we do it says building a pie chart is pretty simple as we only require a single series of data which will consist of a label for the data and its value in this case we're going to chart out our processes by their working set property to see what our top 10 memory hogs are Okay, so we're just going to use this command. <clears throat> so I'm highlighting it in the ISE and I hit F8 and it's going to run it down here. Process equals get process sort object by the property WS descending select the first 10. Okay. Now we need to do a few other things before we start diving into the world of chart controls. Okay, I skipped this. I didn't do that. Next up is loading the required types to work with the chart controls as well as the Windows forms. Okay, then we do this. It says add type assembly name system windows forms, add type assembly name system windows forms data visualization. Boom. Done. And just because actually I'm a little curious, oh don't do that. Don't do that. Get help. Add type. What does that do? The add type command lets you define a Microsoft.NET Framework class in your Windows PowerShell session. That is so sweet. You can then instantiate objects by using the new object command lint and use the objects just as you would any .NET Framework object. He, they're talking about inside a programming environment. <laughs> but PowerShell lets you do it inside this interpreted environment. If you add an add type command to your Windows PowerShell profile, the class is available in all Windows PowerShell sessions. Yes, profiles are the bomb. They're the bomb. I, I set up mine today at work and it was quite nice. In fact, I should do a video on that. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> so we've got this here. Actually, if you just type in profile, it'll show you where your profile is supposed to be. So like if I go documents, okay. Windows PowerShell. Aha. Uh -huh. Whoops. CD Windows PowerShell. And then it should be right in there, but there isn't. Installed scripts info. Get transactions. Oh, yeah, that's for my stuff. Okay. Anyways, carrying on here. <laughs> Next up is to create our chart chart area and series objects as well as making it easier to find all of our available charts by saving the enum to a variable. Okay, so here's the chart, the chart area, the series, and the chart types. Oh, that's interesting. So what is chart? Oh, huh. Uh, okay. Okay. Then it says now picking a chart is as simple as using chart types. Okay, series chart type equals chart types pi. So we're going to make a pie chart. You know, considering that it's close to Thanksgiving, that that's very um, actually appropriate. So, <laughs> so it says within with this we have defined our series as being a pie chart. Default is a line chart. What is interesting here is that we are not defining our chart type where you would have expected it to be, but instead define it within the series object. Now we do end up placing the series object within the chart and then the chart within the chart area. 
Note, I don't actually need a chart area with a pie chart, but I'm including this for the sake of covering all pieces of the chart build. Cool. Okay, so then we go ahead and add, it says here, chart series, add series. So you're adding the pie chart. And then chart, chart areas, add, and you're adding your chart area into that. That's interesting. And chart area was defined up here. New object system windows formed out of the charting area. Chart area. Huh. Okay. So then you must have to populate those with uh, series. Series 1 points data bind XY process name process WS. Oh, so here's where it's referencing the processes and putting it into the chart. Boom. And then it's doing a little bit of initialization on the chart with height, left, top background color, border color, border dash style. Boom. Okay. And then we've got chart title is a new object. So apparently in order to get a chart title you have to create an object. Then chart title text, top five processes by working set memory. Font equals new object system drawing font. Microsoft Sans Serif 12 system drawing font style bold. That's cool. Chart title font equals font. Okay, so you're setting the font in the title to equal the font you've just created. And then titles, chart titles add chart title, which would add the chart title object to that chart. Okay, interesting. Okay, so right down here. So it says, yeah, so we went through all that. So it says, typically if I want to add a legend along with a pie chart, I will avoid having anything on the actual chart itself and leave a description for each pie to be in the legend. This is just a personal preference, but if you want, you can certainly have both. With that in mind, I will show you two alternate approaches for the chart display with and without the legend. Okay, using a legend. As I'm using a legend here, I want to avoid any data from being displayed on the chart itself. So I will make sure to disable the pie chart styles. Where's that? The next step is set up my legend so it displays useful information. Oh, so this is to disable the pie chart styles, which I didn't actually copy that code. And where are we at? Right here. Okay, but we're going to put the legend in. We're not going to disable anything. We're just going to go like that. So now I have my configurations complete, completed for including a legend within my chart. It says legend equals new object. Now let's go back to the legend is new object system windows form data visualization charting legend. Legend is equally spaced items, equally spaced items true. Legend border color equals black. Chart legends add legend. Chart series, series one, legend text equals val x val y oh cool that's cool i didn't even see that <laughs> now i have a configuration completed for including a legend with my chart note that the val x will display the values of the x-axis while the val y displays the y value so in this case i will have the process name as val x and the working set memory as val y in the parentheses avoiding a legend okay so adding a legend was really in the cards we just want to show the chart but at the same time I have items that are the simple enough we will just add more configurations to add the data point labels oh okay so that's that's right here <clears throat> data or so chart series series one pie line color black pie label style outside label equals val x val y oh that's the labels put those in that's cool okay so now we're all set. All that is really left to do is display the results of our work. Before we do that, we need to define a WinForm object that will host the chart object and properly display the work. Okay. The result is a chart that we can display to people with the added bonus of being able to save it via a save button. Okay. So here's the Windows save form. Let's kind of go through this line by line and look at it. Anchor all equals system windows forms anchor styles, anchor styles bottom dash bore probably border, system windows on our right, top, left. Okay, form equals windows form, form, forms, form. Width, height, controls, add chart. Chart anchor equals anchor all. Let's just go there. Add a save button. Not sure what that is, but save button equals new object. Windows form button, text equals save, top, left, anchor, windows form, bottom, right, 
save button dot add click and then it defines result equals invoke save dialog if results oh well we don't need this we don't need the save button oh but we can put it in okay form controls I mean, we can keep it in this code so I'll, yeah form controls add save button add shown form activate show dialog <laughs> That is so nice. Look at that. Oh, and it scales when you saw. Oh, I love that. Sizes with the window. Again, okay, I'm, I'm really loving .NET right now, and I'm regretting the past uh, few years of my life <laughs> not getting into .NET. But that looks uh, pretty sweet. So, okay, uh, let's look at this because it says to add 3D and to incline it by 50 degrees. That's pretty cool. And then we got to show dialogue again. That is so cool. Okay, and it lists everything over here as well as it puts it on the actual pie chart. So there's, you know, it's got a title up there. That looks really great. Um, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and post this on YouTube. I'm going to post it on Facebook and then tag my buddy Joe. And then I'm going to work on this and, and, and put this uh, to work at work. <laughs> I'm sure Josh would like it too. So. Yes, we may actually get Josh into uh, PowerShell. <laughs> He's like, ah, I can do that in Excel. <laughs> All right, anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave comments in the comments below.